Hello everyone, my name is Archal Agrawal from second year PGDM program and an ambassador of sustainable development goal number 7 welcomes you all to this YouTube channel where we will have a discussion on the topic sustainable development goal 7 that is affordable and clean energy. Today among us we have Mr. Tarun Singh Anand, the one who needs no introduction but to formally introduce him, he is the chairman and the co-founder of Universal Business School. Thank you sir for accepting our invite to join us here and share your valuable insights on the topic sustainable development goal number 7. So to begin with, I would request you to throw some light on sustainable development goal number 7. Thank you for this wonderful opportunity and I am very proud of the work that the ambassadors are doing on the SDG goals. So to me this is the most important sustainable development goal and why is that? Because the whole essence of uh, global warming, increase in temperatures is because of one sustainable development goal which is energy. It's like the 80-20 principle. That one goal is responsible for the maximum amount of damage. So if we can really put all our energies towards this SDG, I think we would be solving a large amount of the problems. So uh, given the importance of this goal, I think it's better we understand what is this goal all about. The first important thing is access to modern energy. So access is the focus, right? Can we get this new energy, uh, renewable energy to all the various uh, people who are under the you know, pyramid as we call the CK Pralad bottom of the pyramid. The second most important thing is uh, how are we diversifying our energy mix to get more uh, renewables into the energy mix. That's number two. The third aspect of it is research and development into this energy transition and how much can uh, organizations and uh, you know the government spend to develop these uh, new energy tools. The third is the multiplier effect of how can you have multiple sources of renewable energy. And the final important point is the aspect around how can you ensure that this energy is stored uh, and that will really amplify the entire um, use case of this energy sources. So right. that's the whole essence of uh, SDG 7. Definitely, your point is uh, very accurate uh, for the sustainable development goal number 7. So my next question is, what, what are the initiatives UBS has taken for this uh, SDG 7? So we uh, started with, from our inception, we said, you know, how can we reduce the consumption of energy? And therefore, from the design of the buildings, this entire concept was uh, ingrained, given we were, uh, you know, very clear that we want to become India's first green business school. So first, redu reduction in energy use. So we started with the building design. So all the glass that you see on the facade of UBS, it's basically Diju glass, double jointed glass. So they're basically two glass panes with a vacuum inside so that it reduces the um, heat transmission into the building, therefore reduces the air conditioning consumption and therefore the energy. Similarly, all the walls that you see, the entire facade uh, of the entire campus, the wall you see is not actually the real wall. The wall is here. There's a one feet gap between what you see, which is the dry cladding and the wall so there are you know uh, ms uh, structures outside the wall again creating what we call the thermos effect less heat transmission less into the building and therefore less air conditioning and therefore less energy so that's the what we call the concept of smart buildings then we said how do we further reduce we said uh, as much we can whether it's the double heighted ceilings in the library or uh, with the glass uh, less requirement for lights because you have natural light as long as you know we as an institute are working till 6 p.m. so at least for 5 5 30 you don't actually need to have lights on uh, so those were some of the inceptional things then we said the next big target is energy efficiency I believe that you can get at least 20% gain and 20% is huge in terms of uh, you know the when you talk of actuals 20% gain uh, by just changing all your lights to LED lights or uh, you can get a 35% gain when you go into BLDC fans so all our new fans including the fan in the library which I'll talk about in a minute are based on BLDC technology which gives you an idea that normally you require 
74, 75 watts for a typical fan. The BLDC fans require 28 watts. So you're literally getting a 50% uh, reduction in energy consumption uh, on that. Then uh, we install this massive fan, which is I think 24 feet or, uh, in the library. Uh, and library being a double story structure, uh, you know, air conditioning was required because at, at any points of the year. But now we realize with just installing this one fan, uh, 20 feet, four feet fan, your uh, air conditioning requirement, and it requires a huge amount of energy to cool that large uh, structure for a, a large part of the year when it's very pleasant, especially, you know, during the rains and all the way through to March, which means you're talking of 75% of the academic, um, uh, you know, delivery time. Uh, you don't need the air conditioning because this fan with its uh, blades and the size of it and using BLDC technology can reduce your energy consumption. So reduce, reduce, reduce is the first thing. Energy efficiency is the second thing. The third area we said was we want to make sure that we want to get in solar energy and during the pandemic we invested in a plant, a 300 watt plant which takes care of 70% of our energy requirements is taken care of through the solar plant. We have rooftop solar and we have carport solar. The carport solar had a double advantage that not only does it generate solar energy, but it also has uh, shade for the cars. So it was a double uh, you know, um, uh, advantage for us as an institute. And therefore the cost of energy, we pay around 11.5 rupees a, a unit to the Maharashtra uh, government, um, the electricity board. Uh, we said by doing this, for 70%, we are paying four and a half or even lesser rupees. So it's a savings, it's reducing our carbon footprint by maximum. And as I said, energy is 80% and our largest cost in this institute is electricity. So if you can target the big bang, you have a huge impact. Then we said we will invest in electrical vehicles because rather than showing the campus to students and guests around the campus, using the traditional fuel uh, and cars. Can, can we get an EV vehicle? So we've now invested in that. Uh, and we're going to continue to invest in more uh, electro, uh, electrical vehicles to reduce our car carbon footprint. Uh, we then said that, okay, this is organizational practices. Can we ensure that we can, in the academic uh, learning, bring in these practices? So we started a SMART project. SMART is an uh, acronym for um, uh, essentially um, management, aptitude and potential uh, to social causes. So social management and aptitude potential and responsibility which students will go into the villages uh, and essentially uh, talk about the impact of the environment on to these villagers and inform them there's an awareness program, there are uh, plays, nukkar plays where we take this uh, and make it into reality so that they can appreciate and this is on all aspects, social aspects, health aspects, environment aspects, agricultural practices uh, and livelihood. Uh, but the gamut of that makes sure that students, uh, every student has a credit point associated where he or she goes into the villages for a period of, you know, a week uh, and therefore really connects with and makes an impact. So that was getting academic uh, academics into it. Then we said, let's focus on the research aspect. And in the research aspect, many of our faculty uh, have written some amazing literature uh, and furthering the research on um, solar energy, solar power, and other renewable sources. So that was our research contribution. Then we said, let's now look at co-curricular activities. So we have clubs on campus, uh, and uh, one of our clubs, um, Inactus, essentially developed with a, uh, a sonar light, a solar light essentially, along with a collaboration with Carlo Institute of uh, Technology in Germany. Uh, and that was, you know, another area where we demonstrated this entire aspect. We have an environment club, which is continuously coming out with news, newsletters on various aspects of the ESG and of course, uh, sustainable development goals. Uh, we also have um, you know, then we said, can we now go on the global stage and showcase our um, capabilities on um, SDG 7? So we created, uh, the faculty created uh, 
uh, led by the research head Dr. Asha, created a, a micro simulation on the Capsin global platform on e-batteries and the usage of e-batteries and how that. And we were very delighted that we won uh, a top five B school in the world for our uh, Capsin's uh, micro simulation created by our research team. So I think these are some of the areas where we've really, really taken uh, it uh, into our DNA as an institute to make an impact on the, our carbon footprint and therein to our reduction in greenhouse gas emissions and therefore contributing in our own small way to the uh, you know, target set in the COP27 in Egypt. This is very really impressive to know so many things about UBS doing for Sustainable Development Goal 7 and the viewer should also know uh, these things about UBS to uh, implement such things in their way, uh, in their life to contribute to a society. So my last question uh, would be, uh, can you please uh, advise some of the things to our UB viewers uh, about this uh, topic? So I, you know, I'll just end with the, we have a very comprehensive uh, SDG dashboard, which actually tracks all our uh, attempts, including uh, such initiatives like yourself, uh, on a dashboard which is in partnership with Hop School of Business in the United States, uh, in Minnesota, and we track every activity that we do. Uh, so it's very transparent. Uh, we, uh, these are around organizational practices, partnerships and dialogues, um, uh, academic teaching, research, uh, and um, the overall impact that we create is all documented on our SDG uh, dashboard. So I would request all institutions, students to really look at that to see the kind of effort that we're doing across all SDGs. We are also became the first school in 2022 uh, in India to publish our ESG report and the second edition of that is going to be coming out very very shortly in a few uh, weeks from now so uh, it, it demonstrates all the aspects of every SDG and of course the broader principles of ESG that we follow in our institute so I would request all students to you know get hold of that because tomorrow's world when you go out into industry trust me every institution is the biggest problem that the institutions are looking at, governments are looking at, uh, is climate change. And your company will be uh, having to meet compliance targets and before compliances and regulations kick in, you should be fully prepared. So you need to become the change drivers when you go into the industry to be able to uh, you know, demonstrate that we know so many ideas that we can use uh, and take that, those learnings to your industry and I'm going to be sure you're going to be most valuable uh, as, a, as a new employee entering in with the host of ideas and become change agents which will make you responsible leaders of the future. Definitely, definitely. Thank you sir for sharing so much valuable insights and all the works you and UBS has done for this uh, sustainable development goal. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you.